Okay guys, so this one says, my workplace doesn't let you use the word problems. Instead, we have to say challenges if something is wrong, as a problem is a negative word and challenges promotes the fact that there is room to fix said problem. Could you imagine walking in, it's like your third day there at work and you say problems and then you get it talking to for that? I actually can't imagine like having that conversation, having that one-on-one -on -one interaction with my boss when he comes up to me and says, you know the problem here is you saying problems yeah, how do they even approach that? He's like, actually, I have a challenge right now. I have a challenge with you saying the word problems. Do you maybe see a challenge with what you've done? That's insanity. I love the positive attitude, but I think we've gone a little bit too, too overboard here, guys. Oh, okay. Um, all the extra toilet paper in the building has to stay in a single closet where it can be overseen by the toilet paper queen. I heard her shrieking the other day when she discovered somebody had hoarded one spare roll of toilet paper upstairs so the people who work upstairs wouldn't have to walk down multiple flights of stairs when the toilet paper ran out. Um, um, <laughs> that's a little bit too far, my friend. The toilet paper queen and she's getting upset at people hoarding one spare roll. Honestly, if she was gonna do that, I would just, I need to like steer into the skid here. Like I go on the toilet, we're out of toilet paper. I'm walking downstairs, butt naked, everything's hanging out. Like literally, I just need to get my toilet paper right now and I'm gonna like show it in her face sort of thing. Just be like, hey, I'm just getting my toilet paper cause I'm not allowed to hoard it. Gonna go back upstairs right now. Just let it all hang out. Guaranteed, she'll let me hoard some toilet paper if I did that. You'd also probably get fired, but the, we're not gonna worry about that. <laughs> okay, this one says, I drive valet. The company handbook says you're never allowed to back up, ever. You absolutely cannot do the job without reverse. It's impossible. How would you ever do that? Can you imagine you miss, like you just gently go over like where you're supposed to drive a little bit. You're like, oh, I guess I need to drive around the entire block again, just so I can park into this space because I'm not allowed to reverse. How could you ever do that? That's impossible. You can't drive the car. You drive into something and it's like, you're stuck here now. I have to like get out and push because I'm not allowed to go backwards. I think that's one of those company handbook things that we just like, okay, acknowledge and then like never think about again. Two weeks after I left my previous job, a memo went round saying people aren't allowed to look out of the windows at work anymore. It's a big glass building. No, 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 I don't like that at all. I'd straight up be looking out the window all day long then. My boss comes and talks to me, like he's right here, here's the window. I'm just like, hey boss, how's it going? Just like staring directly out the window as he tries to talk to me. It's like, that's ridiculous. What, I'm not supposed to like look at the, my life out there? They're like, you need to be in prison now. And if you're gonna have something like this, don't put any windows, which would just be a horrible place to work to begin with. That's just awful. Like I need to be able to see out and the thing, I'll be more productive. I will, I will. It's like, if you put me in jail, I'm not gonna do any work. I'm not gonna wanna come here. I wanna see the outside world and know what I'm working towards. That's crazy. Holy moly. Okay, I once needed a pen. Figured this was a reasonable ask. Went to the supply closet on my floor, which was locked. Asked the floor's admin. She told me to go to the main supply room in the basement. Went to the basement and explained my situation of needing a pen. They told me all requests for supplies must be approved by my department head. Problem is, being new, I'd never met my department head. She also worked in San Francisco, I worked in Milwaukee, so I needed to send an email both introducing myself and asking her if I had permission to get a pen from the supply closet. Yo, how would you even, like, like what's the title of that email? What's the subject line? Nice to meet you, need pen? Like, like I don't even know how I would phrase that. Like, hello there, like, admin. Um, my name is Nick. Can I get a pen, please? That is ridiculous. The fact that they're literally sticking to the book with that, it's like, all requests for supplies must be approved. Dude, it's a pen. It's literally a freaking pen. Honestly, at that point, I think I just need to run out to my nearest dollar store, screw the email, we just gotta get our own supply of pens and this is going in the desk. In theory, we are allotted three personal absences a year which cover unforeseen circumstances like a family emergency, car trouble, sick kid, etc. 
But in order to be approved, you need to get consent from the manager in advance. No one that I know has ever actually been approved in advance for their unforeseen emergency. Yo, I hate stuff like that, man. I straight up hate stuff like that. It's like, I don't know. You know, it's like, it's an emergency. It's a car trouble. It's a sick kid. I'll just tell you, it's like, oh my goodness, my kid is going to be sick next Friday. Like, I don't know that. It's like, clearly if I was to do something like that, I'm obviously not using my three personal absences the way that they are supposed to be used. You cannot get approval for this thing. Honestly, nowadays, when it comes comes for me like not being able to come into work I'm just like hey like I have an emergency and like I just can't come and that's just what it is because like my car doesn't work right now so it's just it's impossible for you to approve me or disapprove me because I just won't be able to be here <laughs> uh, this one comes in from X Dan four years ago saying I used to work at a place in which my boss implemented a no more than two glasses a day water policy uh what a blank i ignored this rule and complained directly to our ceo and the matter ended later that day what was weird though was the majority of people actually followed the rule and some even shopped me up to hr about breaking the rules that's insanity i would quit i would quit i would straight up quit immediately if my boss came up to me and said you were allowed two glasses a day of water no no i am not i am allowed as many god glasses of water as I want. I don't care your reasoning. I am having my water. And honestly, if he like stuck his ground or like she stuck their ground, I am getting the biggest freaking glass of water. You could it's this thing is going to be it's going to be the size of my face. It's going to be like a 4 liter glass of water. Be like, "Hey, I got my one glass. Going for glass number 2 later. I don't care how much I have to pee. I'm just doing it in spite." No afternoon coffee. Oh, this is triggering. Imagine not having access to a cup of java during the afternoon slump. That was the reality for Saraba Jinval, who runs the startup Talk Travel in her previous role. At her old gig, coffee machines were off by 3 p.m. The office manager believed that people will start leaving the office from 5 p.m. onwards, hence the office shouldn't offer them coffee in such a little time before that, Jinbal says. That is ridiculous. The fact that you are micromanaging the coffee? No, I, I actually wouldn't be able to work in a place like this. Like, that's just, that is too much. I need to be able to have a coffee to finish those two hours. Because if I don't have my coffee from three to five, my brain, it turns off, guys. Like, I am not productive from that time unless I have have a little bit of a pick-me-up. So uh, that would be my response. It's just like, okay, I understand that it's a short amount of time. I'm not gonna get anything done though, unless I have this. Late donuts. Fresh, free office donuts could definitely boost morale, but that's not the experience of Glenn, oh my goodness, Markweski. Cool. The marketing and communication manager of Living as a Leader. My former employer required us to buy the whole office donuts if we were more than half an hour late for work, Makorsky said. The irony of this is that it made us even later for work. Dude, that's actually kind of hilarious. I just like run it even further and further and further to be like, oh, like this place was out of donuts. Like I had to go to this other place and then they didn't have the Boston cream, you know, and I know that you like the Boston cream, so I went to this other place. Just like do it. To it's like you show up at like 4.45 to work with some donuts. It's like, here's the donuts. Really sorry for being like, it really took me a long time to get these, you know? Just like totally make it the most ridiculous thing ever. Guaranteed they would, they would take that policy out pretty fast. Group elevator rides. Sustainability is an important initiative for companies, but it's possible to take things too far. For Anne Sharpstein, an author and international speaker, one ridiculous office rule she followed while working at a production company required four or more people to take an elevator at a time. What was worse, the elevator was glass that rose up through this large atrium, Sharpstein says, so it was easy to see if you broke the rule. That's so stupid, man. Like, I'd get to the elevator, be like, I want to go up to work, but I just can't. Actually though, that'd be pretty cool. I just literally claim it's like, oh darn, like can't get to work because I'm stuck at the bottom, like need to get somebody for my elevator. This also is clearly pre-COVID time because can you imagine if they still had this rule? Place that I live, it's like you have to have two or less people. So it's like totally opposite, I guess, of energy initiative. Uh, okay, rules on the undergarment. Oh my goodness. One strange rule at an organization was all employees must wear undergarments and women employees are requested to wear nude colored undergarments. Excuse me. And no shiny undergarment colors are also not allowed to wear in the workplace. Whoa, 
That, I feel like this is breaking some serious rules right now. Like this is one of those things where it's like, we maybe have to take you to court over something like this. Cause this just, this just feels wrong. And like, what, what? Well, why are you looking at my, why are you looking at my underwear guys? Why are you looking at my underwear? What does it matter to you what color it is and like what's going on down there? Like if I want to wear a freaking like polka dot rainbow underwear with like little faces on them, like I should be allowed to do so. That is my right and you should not be looking there anyways. Only fully grown, only fully grown a mustache? Geez, at me next time. Even though there's no beard rule, few organizations have some peculiar rules on having a mustache too. Only fully grown mustache are allowed. Any fancy shapes and stashes and facial hair on the face are not allowed. The worst case is employers are not allowed inside till they clean their facial hairs. Okay, hold up though, hold up. How would I be able to get a fully grown mustache if I am not allowed to grow said mustache? There's no interim time period right here. Like for a dude like me, if I walk in like this, I am never allowed to have a mustache. I straight up need to take like mustache vacation and be like, guys, I got to take like three weeks off right now. Just like grow this thing out. And then I can come back to work. Honestly though, if I could do that, that would be a pretty good loophole. Uh, you cannot relocate or move your furniture a step. A ridiculous workplace rule is that the employees are not allowed to move their furniture or relocate according to their need. It has to be done with proper permission or the employees have to call the appropriate service employers to do it for them. Pathetically, the complaint would be raised if they make a noise by dragging the furniture. Yo, this is just too much. This is just too freaking much, man. Like sometimes I just gotta move. I gotta move my thing around so I can get like a different view of things. That's what he said. Apparently I'm not allowed to do that. And I need to get the respective employees. Can you imagine that's your job. I, like you get what you have to hire a furniture mover for this one building just so employees can like move their stuff a few feet. Ridiculous. All right guys. So those are bosses who just went way too freaking far. Comment down below. What is the craziest rule that you guys had at a job before that like now looking back on it is just ridiculous. I want to hear some of those stories. Also hit the like and subscribe button. I've been your host Nicholas Playlog and I'll catch you next time.